the euro. A little less stable, perhaps, its future a little less certain, following Syriza's landslide victory. The Greeks rioted against austerity and now they voted against the cuts imposed by Brussels and the International Monetary Fund. What did the big squeeze achieve? Unemployment shot up to 27%, youth unemployment over 50%. Incomes were reduced so significantly by 35 to 40%. And the extraordinary thing, of course, is that welfare payments were cut. And that meant that quite a lot of the sort of social fabric of Greece um, was in danger of sort of collapsing. Now, we thought we had it tough here in Britain after the 2008 banking crisis. And although our economy initially shrank by a post-war record 6% and then bumped along the bottom for years, our national income, or GDP, is now 2.9% bigger than it was when recession first bit. But in Greece, the contraction was eye-wateringly large and has gone on and on and on. Greece's GDP is still around a quarter smaller than where it was at its peak. What's been the impact of all this hardship? Has Greece's debt burden been cut? Well, quite the opposite. Greece's public sector debt was 109% of GDP, or national income, six years ago, and has risen to a crippling 176% of GDP today. So Greece would dearly like to defer repayments of its debts till the economy is growing again. There are elements here where there can be compromise. Where I think the sticking point will lie is where the conditions of austerity are insisted on by the creditors and which the new Greek government almost certainly will viscerally oppose. Financial markets in other weak Eurozone economies, such as Spain and Italy, which like Greece have seen protests against austerity, were relatively stable today. But Brussels and Germany today signalled they're in no mood to let Greece off either its debts or the cuts. So no one can be sure that Greece can and will stay in the Eurozone. And if the Euro turned out not to be forever, well, money would pour out of the region, wreaking financial and economic havoc. Robert Peston, BBC News.